Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd, and today I want to talk about our first look at uh, Star Trek Prodigy, which is a Star Trek cartoon aimed directly at smaller children, unlike Lower Decks, which was aimed at uh, teenagers and adults. This one will be directly for kids. And the first thing I want to say, I'm not sure it's necessary to have that kind of division. Why divide a franchise into different shows by age groups? Why not make a show for everyone? You know, I used to watch a Star Trek TNG at a pretty young age. I think at the age of seven I was watching it and I understood enough of it to enjoy it. And even those parts I didn't understand, at least it made me curious. It inspired me to learn more about it and all of that. And so I don't think Star Trek should be divided into different shows for different ages at all, why not just make it an all family show for everyone? So anyway, they're making this cartoon specifically at kids. And so part of me is not uh, angry about it because, you know, I have a small nephew who is uh, three and a half and I'm uh, thinking about, you know, what show is best to introduce him to science fiction and all of that. So maybe starting out with a kid's cartoon set in this universe uh, wouldn't be such a bad idea. And so that's why I'm kind of uh, cautiously optimistic. I'm hoping for it to be good for kids at least even if adults won't be enjoying it. And so that's why, you know, I don't want to prejudge anything before I actually see it. And I'm hoping for it to be good, but the poster does make me kind of worried because it doesn't look anything like Star Trek in any way. It just looks like some random cartoon or uh, in science fiction, maybe it's similar to Guardians of the Galaxy, maybe a touch of Star Wars, but uh, not really Star Trek in any way. But, you know, we don't yet see any of the ships, any other characters. I heard that uh, Captain Janeway is supposed to be in the show and if that's the case then we are going to get human characters and Starfleet characters and so maybe they're simply showing us the new stuff, all the stuff which is uh, unrecognizable. So all the characters are some sorts of aliens and none of them are aliens that we ever saw before in Star Trek. Now I'm not saying that we have to see those kinds of aliens. I always said that I want to see more exotic aliens like and I'm tired of all the same species like uh, how many times can we see Vulcans and Klingons and even humans and so I wouldn't mind a show all about aliens and the variety of aliens and have them uh, be exotic new aliens. I don't mind that idea. Simply explain it away by saying it all starts from some distant part of the galaxy, not in Federation space, not close to the Federation. You can have an excuse which would work and uh, then you can have a brand new aliens and the plot is apparently going to be about these alien kids who find a Starfleet ship and they take over it and they use it to go to other places in the galaxy. So I don't necessarily mind that idea, even though that's not really the vision of Star Trek, you know, and it's not about humanity at all. If there are no human characters and none of the aliens are uh, anything we saw before. So maybe they should have had at least one of these aliens be something recognizable, but instead they chose to have a brand new characters and I might have liked it if it was truly original in some way but uh, my problem is that uh, each one of these characters reminds me of something from other movies and other shows and so it doesn't really feel original either so if they're not inventing anything truly original then what's the point then why not simply reuse uh, all the existing species at least then it will feel like Star Trek but uh, apparently they want to do new things I guess they want to spread their net to catch more fish, to have better ratings, and so they're cashing in not just on the name of Star Trek for this, but also mimicking a lot of other things from other movies which were popular. And that explains why all these characters look like things from other shows and other movies. And that's one of my biggest problems with uh, Star Trek Discovery, that uh, so often it feels so unoriginal, it feels as if they're mimicking other franchises, other movies and other shows either because they don't have enough imagination to invent something new or because they want to cash in on things that they know were successful and so you know uh, they had that robot in space which is like a squid so just like in the matrix movies and we had those astro droids repairing the ship from the outside just like rtd2 and they had the programmable matter which looks exactly like uh, that technology in men of steel and so all the time I kept saying, oh, that reminds me of that movie, this reminds me of that movie. So almost everything in that show is similar to other movies and other franchises and with the name of Star Trek on top. And it's all as if it was all put in a blender to try to create the most successful show. So it feels as if uh, someone just took all the most successful ideas from all the franchises and put it all in one blender and then put uh, the name Star Trek on top to try to create the most successful show ever and yet it feels so unoriginal so many times and so self-contradictory in so many ways 
that is just annoying in my opinion because I constantly recognize instead of thinking oh what a clever new idea that I never saw before instead I keep getting reminded of other movies and so I feel the same way when looking at this poster because every single one of these characters reminds me of something else which I saw before so where is the originality where is the imagination and it feels to me as if once again someone made kind of a checklist of uh, what kind of things do kids like and let's do the same thing only change it a little bit so that we won't get sued but basically collect all the things that kids want and put it all in a blender and create all of this so that's what i feel when i look at this poster now for the young kids who will be watching maybe none of that will matter because they have not yet had the chance they didn't yet have the time to watch all that other stuff that is similar to this and so for them it will be completely original and new so maybe the kids will enjoy it and i guess it's okay you know if it's enjoyable if it's done well if it's written well if it will be educational in some way if it will inspire kids in some way or if it's just purely entertainment if it will be funny if it will be enjoyable i can't really hate on that so i will wait until i see the actual product and i will test it on my nephew and i will tell you later what uh, our reactions were but for now I can simply share my thoughts on what I see when I look at this poster. So let's start from right to left. The creature on the right reminds me of the thing from Fantastic Four, which was kind of a rocky big creature. And it's also similar to the fat robot in the movie Big Hero 6. So that's what it reminds me of. And the creature next to him looks really similar to Yafet from the Orville. Only the color is different here, it's more blue and purple and not green. And apparently it has eyes, but other than that it's apparently the same thing. And next we have that guy with the haircut. He kind of reminds me of the main hero in the movie Ready Player One, who was also kind of the cool kid and all of that, and kind of also similar to Marty McFly, you know, his shoes unlaced and all of that and that haircut. So it really reminds me of that kind of type, uh, like in Ready Player One. And the one next to him, who I guess is supposed to be a girl, even though it's kind of uh, unclear, but you know, all the other ones look like they are males, and so probably this one will be female, probably the leader of the team. Of course, as always nowadays, uh, a woman has to be the leader and the best at everything, and so that's probably a girl here, even though it might turn out to be kind of a genderless character or whatever. And uh, the design uh, kind of reminds me of Natiri from Avatar, kind of a very slim body with long hair and kind of similar to Legolas and that kind of type. So it's probably going to be the leader of the team and the, the best warrior in the galaxy and all of that. Next we have this short fat alien who looks kind of like a cross between Neelix and those big creatures from Star Wars also cosplaying as some kind of mechanic slash action hero and he looks all dirty and messed up so I guess it's going to be the mechanic guy and he seems to have one robotic hand. And he looks like a character who belongs in Star Wars and not Star Trek because they uh, just look at his uh, shirt, it's all dirty and ripped up and covered with uh, oil stains and all of that. So it's not something I would imagine in the Star Trek universe in which technology is so much more advanced and cleaner and you don't really use oil anymore and stuff like that. It's all much cleaner, you just use energy devices to fix uh, things and everything should be much smoother and cleaner and yet he looks like all uh, oily and dirty because he's a mechanic of dirty machinery and so it just doesn't fit the Star Trek universe in my opinion. And next we have this uh, robot character who looks like he's made from different parts of different robots and that's why every one of his limbs is different from each other and uh, the middle part uh, is uh, strange, it doesn't seem to have a head, he has something glowing in the middle so he kind of reminds me of the style of the Alpha 5 from the Power Rangers reboot movie crossed with that robot in the new Lost in Space who also had a glowy thing in his uh, middle screen or whatever so he also doesn't really look very original and looks literally like a mashup of different things put together just as I was talking about previously how it seems like uh, they just put a bunch of different stuff into a blender so that's what this robot actually looks like he's made up of different pieces from different places so that's my thoughts on these characters and so none of them is a human none of them is any kind of similar alien the closest i would say is that fat guy looks kind of similar to neelix you know neelix also had strange spots on his skin and all of that so that's the only familiar looking alien from all of them and the one in the middle the one who looks like a woman uh, also reminds me of those uh, twins from the matrix movies especially the hair is really similar 
It would be nice to have at least one of these characters be something original that wouldn't immediately remind us all of something else. So I guess we'll have to wait and see if it will be any good. Maybe there will be more characters, maybe there will be cool ships and cool technology. So I guess we'll wait and see what they'll do with this. So I don't want to prejudge it before I actually see it. And uh, just like with Lower Decks, I remember kind of hating on it at first and I did dislike the first episode, but later it did become much better. It wasn't perfect, but it was okay in my opinion and even fun in some places and so maybe the show will be good i hope it will be because i'm probably going to review it anyway so i prefer to enjoy what i'm watching instead of hate watching it and so that's my hope so let me know what you think and we can discuss it in the comment section below and i will see you all next time bye bye